Setos is a brand new 4 star electro character that is here to shake the meta. Well, not really. I've been playing him quite a bit and there is one thing that bugs me, but one step at a time. Setos has two playstyles, a charge attack spam playstyle thanks to his level 2 charger attack which scales both from his attack and elemental mastery. The charging time here is extremely long, but he can consume up to 20 of his own energy to reduce it drastically, thanks to his Ascension 1. His skill will aid this gameplay. Once cast, he will dash backwards and get 12 flat energy if he triggers a reaction, plus 2 Electro Particles. The other Ascension passive will boost the damage of this playstyle based on his Elemental Mastery. Every 15 seconds, 4 of these shots will enjoy a 700% of his Elemental Mastery as a damage boost. What about the other playstyle? Using his burst allows him to spam normal attacks that will receive an Electro Infusion, Extra Elemental Mastery Scaling and Pierce enemies. These hits, however, are still considered charged attack damage. So you either spam charge attacks, avoiding his burst, or use the burst and basically play Yoimiya. And you can use both, but the charge attack playstyle restricts your rotation quite a bit. You either play him every 15 seconds using just 4 shots or stay on field a long time and lose a bunch of damage. The burst playstyle will generally yield more damage, but you can also mix them and if you have a lot of energy at your disposal you can use the burst and also use the 4 enhanced attacks when it expires, since for its duration it locks you into spamming the normals. I will show you some rotation examples later. And with that out of the way, we can finally talk about Setos as a character overall, and why the thumbnail says that he only has one team. And the answer is quite simple. No matter how you play him, a very obvious detail stands out. Elemental Mastery is everywhere. You ascend him, he gets EM. His burst playstyle? Boosted by EM. Charger attacks? Literally scale off EM. Ascension passive? More EM. And what do you pair an Elemental Mastery focused Electro with? There's one thing really, as any other reaction would just be underwhelming or not worth it. And that's Dindro. When Setos attacks hidden opponent under the Quicken debuff, well, not only the base damage is boosted by all the Elemental Mastery scaling that it has, we will also further boost its damage thanks to the reaction. Spread and aggravate add to your damage using your level and Elemental Mastery. They are then multiplied by your Electro Damage, Crit and other forms of damage percentage. Meaning that any iteration of Quicken teams are just perfect for him. And this includes Hyperbloom in a sense. I talk plenty about this concept in my enlightened video, but basically, depending on how much Hydro we add to a Quicken team, we shift the amount of Quicken uptime and Hyperbloom triggers. The more Hydro, the more Hyperbloom. The less Hydro, the more Quicken. But Setos will trigger Bloom Course decently only with the burst and only if he's on field. Moreover, certain big enemies will make him aim very high up and that will lose your Hyperblooms. But overall, anything that happens in a danger team for an Electro unit that has a bunch of Elemental Mastery is quite beneficial. Let's see some examples. Regardless of the playstyle, a couple of great danger units for a rather fragile character like Setos are Kirara and Baiju. They also don't apply too much danger, meaning that an Nemo unit can be easily slotted in. But of course, Nahida would be the character with the highest damage ceiling. Hydro can be added in the form of Furina, especially for the Chojo attack spam playstyle, while the burst plus normal can still use a more classic approach in Yellen and Sinchu. We can see a great deal of hyperlooms, especially in this team. And to be honest, that's pretty much it. The last thing you could do in such teams is a dual carry setup where you cut on Setos on field time by only using his charge attacks and have another damage dealer with a short damage window. Ya and Tignari are great examples. I'm going to give you two rotations now, so that you can understand in a more practical way what to do with him. First one that focuses on his damage and burst. So we set up our team, and then burst, two normals, skill, two normals repeated. We interrupt each combo after the second shot because it's a two hit combo, meaning that every time we do N1 plus N2, it's three total hits, increasing our chances to trigger aggravate. You can either interrupt it with a dash or just by walking. Let's now use the charge attack playstyle. This one is a little bit harder to make good work of, but an idea could be a dual carry setup with Tignari. Repeating a cycle in which we are on Tignari when his faster attacks are up and set us when he is R. Otherwise, just playing any on-fielder that won't take too long and add in 4 set of charge attacks every 15 seconds, it's also a good way to use this playstyle. 
Of course, this is just an example, and much more is to be discovered for such a unique character. I've seen texts that quote-unquote cheat energy, and showcases where it's built on insane amounts of energy recharge. But for now, nothing really practical. This video is not meant as a complete guide, but let's quickly run down his builds. First off, he has access to Slingshot, which is such a strong weapon on him that even surpasses most 5-star options. The passive gives an incredibly high amount of damage percentage to charge attacks, if they hit by 0.3 seconds after being shot. And that sounds like you have to hug the enemy, but in reality the distance necessary is way more forgiving. It's also a great crit rate stat stick, and the fact that it has low attack doesn't bother you much because of all the elemental mastery talks we had earlier. And no, the new bow that we're getting from the event is not better unless you really focus on hyper room and trigger a ton of them, which I generally wouldn't advise. Since basically all your damage sources are considered charge attack damage, Wonder's Troop is just perfect and screams settles. However, TF, Gilded, Marichusi with Furina and Rainbow options can be considered quite easily. Your main stats are basically always going to be Elemental Mastery Sands, Electro Goblet and Crate Circlet. He also does not have constellations that make his damage really increase that much. Although C2 is a very good upgrade, as it's basically 30% Electro damage achievable by both playstyles. If you have any concern or questions about Setos, make sure to comment below, or let me know if you're enjoying him, or, well, if you got him in the first place. Consider subbing for more content, and see you in the next video.